Okay. Good day, everyone. DJ Darks here. I uh, didn't imagine I'd be saying that anytime soon, but uh, I have been meaning to make this video for a while, um, answering a question that I get quite often, um, just in general, if I'm on a Discord or if I do sporadically live stream. And that question is, uh, so what happened? Why did you stop playing or why did you stop making as many YouTube videos? And look, the short answer for that is life, but I thought I'd take a bit of time out this afternoon uh, just to explain what exactly happened and sort of how my 2DX journey progressed uh, over the last couple of years. So in order to do that, I figured we'd go back to sort of where I left off, which was the last big video that I made and that video was the one on random and discussing why players should use it. Now that video was pretty big, that was a 14 minute video and um, as you guys can probably tell I'm not an expert in uh, video production but in order to do a minute of that video or every minute would take me about an hour or two to, to edit so to speak just to add in like all the images and the timings and stuff like that. So I put a lot of work into that video and although it's not perfect it turned out good enough to sort of get across the point that I wanted to get across. Um, so what happened after that? Well I guess it's been long enough now that we can talk about it but essentially uh, what I was playing on at the time or what I was using to play was um, data that was not legitimate Konami data and I was playing on a network that wasn't affiliated with Konami. Um, shortly after that video that network ended up closing down due to the group of people running it getting a, a cease and desist letter from Konami. And I made some questionable choices on what to do with that information and how to approach it. Um, I tried to take a more open approach and sort of discuss what had happened and where things were going from there. And that obviously rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. Um, I, I got a lot of backlash from a number of people who voiced just how stupid that idea was. Um, look, we all make mistakes at some point in our lives, don't we? So, you know, that was one thing which, you know, probably wasn't the wisest choice. So, look, that happened. Um, so, obviously, one of the main ways that I was playing the game sort of disappeared. And then from there, I guess, um, alongside that, there were a few other things that changed um, that really influenced me to sort of take a step back. First of which being, I started a master's course leading into my current profession, which is teaching. So I am now a qualified teacher. Uh, but that happened around the same time that the, the network that I was playing on went down. Um, so that was one thing I wanted to focus a bit more on my studies. Uh, the second thing though comes down to uh, 2DX, the game itself, and what has pretty much changed from that point. So... Uh, after that style was obviously copular because I just was playing around like Pendul. During Pendul, I was playing quite heavily. Um, copular itself, uh, I didn't really like the style so much. Uh, to be honest, the, the theme didn't really hit home very well with me. I wasn't a huge fan. Um, and the other thing which I started to notice uh, was that the charting style had changed a little bit. Um, there's, there's this thing that I talked to Gokken about called copular syndrome, where... Uh, they started to use a lot more like random 12th and 24th bursts in the charting. And I started to notice this and I, I get why they did it. It's to sort of add a bit of variety into the charts, but I didn't really like that approach to sort of try and inflate difficulty. Um, the other thing as well is uh, density. And I think 1048 made a really good post around the Cinnabuzz era um, about what has happened with the charting in 2DX. And I mean, what we've seen as a result of the player base expanding, obviously they sort of expanded out and machines are available in Korea and other countries, uh, America included. Um, you start to see a lot more player bases who, who played at home on BMS sort of coming in um, and a lot of players who are able to do level 12s. And as a result, I feel like Konami's sort of tailored their content to meet that demand of players who have that skill level. So... As time has gone on, uh, it comes back to a point that I made back in that random video, which is that uh, charting has changed drastically throughout the styles. As we see back in third style, you know, the hardest thing was the Safari, and now you look at something like that compared to the Flux Legendaria, right? Um, vastly different charting styles. And I think it also just comes down to um, the demand 
right? That people like playing hard stuff. People like nailing those big combos and those big dense patterns uh, in order to achieve well. And, you know, that's great. And I understand that people get a kick out of that. But I think for me, uh, as an individual player, um, I was hitting a point within Pendule where, you know, I was triple A 12s. I was doing okay, like pr pretty well. But for me to continue progressing, um, I sort of hit this point, this this wall, right? And I've, I've spoken to a lot of different players about the wall. And that wall is once you hit sort of the, the level 12 or scoring on level 12's level of the game, um, it starts becoming exponentially harder to improve. And the reason for that is because uh, once you've got all the foundations down, it's fine tuning from there and shaving every little extra bit off requires uh, double the focus, right? So to go from, for example, you know, uh, 50 greats on a song down to 25, it requires pretty much double the focus and then 25 down to 12 would be double that even and then further from that, et cetera, et cetera. So you get the idea. It just, it starts requiring a ton of effort and it starts requiring a ton of focus. Now, obviously back when Pendul was out, uh, I'll paint the scenario for you. I was... Uh, unemployed at the time because I'd just come back from Japan. I was living at home and I wasn't really studying or doing anything. So obviously, what better time to try and tackle 2DX than when you're unemployed and able to have all the time in the world to do that. So it was a, it was a good time to be focusing really heavily on 2DX in my life. But obviously, as time's gone on, um, now I've moved out of home. I'm now living with my girlfriend. Um, I've got a full-time job and on top of that, I mean, I'm lucky though, because in my profession, I do have the opportunity to have quite a bit of free time and um, my extracurriculars and responsibilities aren't that great. So I do have the free time. Uh, the issue with that is, um, as time has gone on, uh, I feel like even though I've got all of this free time still, luckily, um, that time can't be solely devoted to 2DX anymore. And I think it comes down to just the shift in gaming in general. I mean, when we look at gaming as a, a, a whole global sphere or from an all games perspective, we see that over the last 10 years, gaming has changed hugely over that time. I mean, if you think back to Tricoro and the sort of games that were available then, and now we look at the number of games that are available in 2021, um, there's just so much stuff out there and great stuff at that too. So I think my perspective or my uh, interests sort of broadened as well. Um, or maybe they stayed the same, but what's happened as a result of, you know, such so much time going past is um, I've wanted to play other things and I've wanted to give other things a go. So for example, um, unfortunately, I did get caught into the MOBA gay scene. Uh, I know a lot of people are in that scene as well where they enjoy playing mobile games. Biggest one I'm playing at the moment, uh, Game Chin Impact. I know I'm, I'm one of those people <laughs> who enjoys playing Genshin, but uh, that takes up some of my time, right? So that's maybe an hour or two hours out of my day to play Genshin. Um, and then on top of that, there's games like uh, Puri Kone, which Taisuke started making me play, which is Princess Connect in, in Japan. That was taking up another 15, 20 minutes of my day. And then on top of that, uh, I decided on a whim last week to purchase Dragon Quest XI because I hadn't played through a Dragon Quest game before. So I thought, okay, I'll give it a shot. And then all of a sudden you see all of these games sort of compounding on one another and then all my free time for the day is essentially gone. So, you know, when you try and add in 2DX on top of that, it uh, gets a little bit tricky. So I think it's not just the fact that, you know, whether or not you've got the free time, it's just what are you going to spend that time doing? And back in the past, no question it would have been 2DX all day, every day, right? But unfortunately nowadays, because of, you know, how much variety is out there and how much I want to do, um, I just, I can't devote that time to re get really, really, really good. And I think there's sort of this compounding uh, issue where, you know, I ask, do I want to put in the time to get good? Yeah, not really. And do I want to just sit down and play the game? And that's the thing. It is easy enough to sit down and play. But I mean, at the same time, you've got that, that sort of feeling of, oh, well, if I'm not going to do super well, then kind of don't want to sit down and you know one thing leads to another inevitably and I end up playing something else so I mean that was a, a basic overview of 
why I've stopped playing, but I think there's a few other things that I wanted to address on top of that. So, uh, the other thing that people ask all the time is what happened to your cabinet? Because as a lot of people know, I purchased a 2DX cabinet coming back from Japan. Um, and I wanted to talk about the cabinet ownership side of things because it's something which, you know, I've mentioned in passing, but I haven't ever made a video about. Now, the way that I want you to look at the cabinet is kind of like owning a car. And you see people with a really nice car, right? And it's, it's awesome. Like, oh man, I'm so jealous. Check out that guy's Mercedes or their Ferrari or whatever kind of car it is, right? I'm, I'm not a big car person. And then you see them and you go, man, it must be so cool to own one of those. It must be so great to zoom around in something like that right and this is coming back I, I stole this metaphor from Asmund Gold uh, who talked about why he leads a simple life in a really interesting video but it's the same sort of thing with the 2DX machine um, it was great owning a machine I will admit it was nice having that arcade feel it was nice having a nice consistent window to play on because you know I was a CRT uh, aficionado I loved my CRTs back then uh, nowadays it's not so much of an issue but back then knowing that the timing window is going to be the same knowing that everything's going to be consistent the way that you want it uh, it was really great the flip side to that though was it took a lot of time to maintain that machine um, when I purchased it it was a wreck it was an absolute wreck right I had to take it from a barely functioning happy sky machine and completely refurbish all of the parts that make it playable to bring it up to scratch to to play pendule at the time um and it, it was it was a ton of work and then if anything went wrong with the machine which happened often like a hard drive would die or something would fail and i'd have to figure out what had failed you know it's just a huge pain trying to sort out what's going on and how to fix it right so uh coming back to the car analogy it's great seeing someone owning that car and you know talking about that car etc but at the same time, uh, they're constantly worrying about it. They constantly have to clean the car. They constantly have to worry when they take it out. Is it going to get scratched? Is someone going to steal it or key it? Right? These are the sorts of things that worried me too. Uh, back when I purchased the machine, it lived, I was at my parents' place and we had no space in the house. My parents didn't want it in the house. So I had it out in a garage. And every single time there was a storm or something that could potentially go wrong with it, I was freaking out right? Because it's in this garage that's not exactly the most weatherproof place in the world. So I was constantly scared for the, the state of the machine. And over time, um, yeah, that just, that worry made me less and less inclined to go out and play it. Um, and then on top of that, look, the other thing which I probably should have mentioned before the machine was also just the way that the games evolved. Um, and in particular, sort of the music. Um, I think it was around the Cinebuzz era when uh, they swapped from having individual artists down to, you know, the, the Bamani sound team for their music. And one thing which has sort of struck me is when I listen to the newer songs, so, you know, sort of the, the Copula, that, that Cinebuzz I really liked. I thought Cinebuzz was fantastic, but, you know, most of the songs that I listen to they, they didn't really draw me in or affect me as much as the songs in the previous styles did. And look, it probably is my age, let's be honest. I mean, back when I first started and I first heard some of the songs in 2DX, you know, I was a young, bright-eyed, 13-year-old boy and hearing songs like Emotion 2003 and Freezing Atmosphere, you know, I, I thought at the time, man, those are the best songs I've ever heard. They sound so amazing, right? And... You know, those nostalgic feelings and those, you know, big emotions that those songs brought out. Um, the newer songs don't really evoke that in me. And look, I'm not saying that I don't like some of the music that's in the modern games. I do actually like the music. It's just, it, it, it doesn't drive me as much. It doesn't have that same feel as the songs that I listened to back then. And, you know, it's purely subjective, right? Like, I'm sure there's some people here... Uh, nowadays who are still playing the game that love a lot of the tracks that are in there and say, no, this one's super duper memorable. But as I said, for me personally, uh, when I listen to some of these tracks, it, they just don't really stick or they don't make me think, wow, that's a song I can remember. Half of the time I forget it. If someone mentions a song name, I'll go, uh, I don't know what that is. <laughs> or I'll forget a song from one of the more modern styles. Um, the other thing obviously then is if you compound all of these factors that I've talked about, um, together. So if we look at the, the music change or the change in the music style, 
we look at the change in the charting and the difficulty and then the the amount of effort it's required to to match that difficulty and then obviously the changing in the amount of free time or the real estate of time that i have um it starts to paint this picture right of well if i really want to play this game i've got to invest a lot of time and i don't know if i really want to commit that much time to playing it when when there's so many other things that i can explore and do um the third factor which i didn't address as well is that around 2018 uh when i did start playing it because i was at my girlfriend's and i had a setup here and i was starting to stream again when you know with infinitus um there was uh, something big that happened in 2018 for Australia, and that was that we got our first networked DDR machine uh, in an arcade called Crown, Crown Amusement or Galactic, well, not Galactic Circus. It was called Kingpin at the time when, when it opened. So we got a machine out of nowhere, like just randomly we received an EMUs linked DDRA machine at the time, which was huge. Like we'd never had EMUs in Australia before. And at the time, obviously, I was playing Infinitus at home and I was enjoying it. But I then went, hmm, okay, well, I'll go check out DDR and see what it's like to play at the arcade again. And I think when that happened and when I went back and started playing at the arcade again, something really dawned on me. And this also links back to the cabinet issue that I was talking about with owning a cab, right? It's, it's great having the cab set up. But I think one thing which really struck me about playing at the arcade again was... There's something special about going to the arcade to play a game versus having it readily available in your home. And it, it brings up this point of uh, what we call the cabinet curse. Like I was talking to Gokun about this about a year ago, but essentially anyone who purchases a cabinet, <laughs> like a music game cabinet, tends to play a lot less or eventually ends up quitting. We call that the, the cab owner's curse, right? And I think that this comes about through the main issue being that even if you have the perfect setup at home to play, it's missing something. And that's something I realized once DDR sort of came back was there's a certain feel and atmosphere to being out, like out of the house and doing something. There's something special about going out to play the game that you want to play, right? And I think that's lost when you own a cabinet. You know, I mean, you've got the feeling of, you know, the actual machine, but you don't have the environment and the, the circumstance surrounding that. And going back and starting to play DDR again around 2018, I sort of realized that a big part of it was the atmosphere, <clears throat> sorry, the atmosphere, as well as meeting up and going and seeing people and actually hanging out and playing those games. And at the time, you know, I didn't really think much of it. I, I wasn't keen to engage with uh, the dance and game community at the time I was like, you know, I'm a 2DX guy. I don't really care that much about DDR. But the more I started to engage with it and interact with the people who were playing, the more I realized, hey, this is this is that thing that I've really been missing. Like that that sense of community and and going out and looking forward to meeting up with people to play the game, that that really struck a chord to me. And so, you know, around 2018, that was when I started to go and and play to DDR a lot more than 2DX. I sort of just put all my controllers on the back burner and didn't really touch the game. And then in 2019, uh, as I've told a lot of people, I actually ended up selling my cabinet. Main reason being, I hadn't touched the cabinet in three years. Uh, if I did want to play 2DX, there was no point in going down into that dingy garage and starting up the machine when, you know, I had Infinitus right next to me. And the reason why Infinitus obviously got better and better and why I'd prefer it is it's convenient. Like going down and turning on the cabinet was a huge pain in the butt for me. So I'd rather just sit with the controller and and the monitor and play there. Um, and the other thing which I wanted to highlight was that a, a lot of the advantages of owning and playing on a cabinet back then have sort of been mitigated now with the advancement in technology and development of consumer software like Infinitus. Uh, back when it first came out, it was a janky, janky game to play. The timing window was a mess. There was barely any songs. It was not really worth playing. But nowadays, when you look at Infinitus 2.0, they offer such a variety of content. Uh, the timing window is spot on. The fact that it's 120 hertz just makes it really, really snap in responsive. And then, of course, in terms of home hardware, you know, you've got things like the Konami Premium Controller, which I think is an outstanding controller. 
And then, of course, we've got the ever-popular Phoenix Worm, which, in my honest opinion, is probably the best controller that's ever come out. Because it, it sort of meets all of the niches, with the exception of the extremists who want arcade perfection. Um, it meets all of those needs for uh, what people need in a good controller. I reckon it's hands down the best controller. And that's why I've purchased one and I use one today. So, look, when I really factored that in and I looked at the Phoenix WAN and I looked at Infinitus and where that had come, I sort of went, look, there's not really much need for me to keep owning a cabinet. So I ended up actually selling it to a local player and it now lives in their house. And ironically enough, that person's also looking to sell the cabinet, I think. So um, there you go, cab owner's curse coming back in full strength. So yeah, when you look at all of these factors and, and what's happened, um, it, it sort of hopefully gives a little bit more insight into why I sort of took a step back from 2DX and stopped really focusing on it. Um, with that being said, I did want to go on the flip side and talk about the fact that, look, I do still really, really like the game. Um, I do keep up with it. Like, even though I wasn't playing, I'd still check out the styles that were coming out. I'd have a look at if there's an event or unlocks and new songs coming out. I'll check out the charts on YouTube and go, I wonder what crazy crap they're trying to show us now. Um, and also the players, like if there's a KAC or if there's, you know, an upcoming top ranker player or something like that, I still keep an eye on it just because at the end of the day, what I said 10 years ago still holds true now. Um, the game, even though it's not something that I'm actively playing regularly, it's still something that's near and dear to my heart because it's been such a heavy influence on my life up until this point. Um, and that being said as well, uh, we've currently been in lockdown in Melbourne, uh, as the time of recording this video, uh, we went into a snap lockdown because, uh, you know what, uh, sort of had a bit of a breakout in our, in our state. So we had to go into a bit of a snap lockdown. So I couldn't play DDR, which is what I've been doing regularly to sort of try and stay fit and energetic. Um, so I whipped out the controller and started streaming again. And then obviously people asking that question of where you've been and what you've been up to sort of spurred me to make this video and sort of talk about where I've been and, and why things are sort of, or have been the way they have. With that being said, I don't really plan on abandoning the channel. I know it's been very drought, <laughs> like a big drought with the content that's been on there, but uh, I do have some ideas down the track on sort of how to revitalize it or maybe continue 2DX related discussions. Um, I know that I'm not sort of in that top, top bracket of players by any stretch, but uh, I still think it's cool to sit down and sort of have a look at the game from different angles and perspectives and maybe discuss ways or approaches that might help people to, to get better. Or even just as, you know, a retiree, just talking about the experience of edging back after a huge break or something like that. But look, if you've stuck around for the 20 minutes that I've spent sort of going over this, uh, just sort of outlining where I've been and how things have changed, um, I appreciate everyone who has been supportive and there and come and said hey on the streams or left messages even uh, on the channel while it's been very inactive um it's really good to see that there's still such a vibrant play base surrounding this game and honestly uh that's one of the big things as i said um about ddr that that really draws me to keep playing these sorts of games or uh gives me that motivation it's having a strong sense of community or a strong strength of strong sense of players or people that, that really draws me to it. Um, it's not so much about the scores nowadays. It's not so much about, you know, those big plays, but having people there around to enjoy the game or to discuss the game with is th the best thing ultimately at the end of the day. So look, <laughs> my, my throat's getting a little bit hoarse talking for this long, but thank you once again. Um, keep an eye on the channel. There are some things coming up that I will announce maybe in the international group or in the Discord, just that I've got planned. And uh, yeah, hopefully, well, we'll see how things go from there. But on top of that, look, tell me how you guys are feeling about the game. How's the game? How are you feeling about 2DX in its current state and where it's going? Um, how motiv motivated are you to keep playing? And uh, if you are one of those players who are lacking some motivation, maybe have a listen to some of the people in the comments because I'm sure they've got something insightful that can help you out. But that's all I've got for you today, guys. Hopefully, uh, I see you guys soonish in another video. But yeah, that's me for now. Uh, retired as ever, but <laughs> still trying my best. All right, have a good one, guys. And I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.